It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Hey, good morning. Welcome to Travel and Cruise Industry News on this, the 11th day of August 2020. Coming to you from Central Virginia, a little town called Forest, right outside of Lynchburg. Another very hot day in Central Virginia. So we're supposed to be up in the 90s again. You know, in August, that's pretty normal for us. So we could have a few 90s degree days. It wasn't normal for us last month. The entire month of July was 90 or better. That was unusual. So anyway, we're, we're here from in Virginia. If you're new to this channel, uh, welcome aboard. As always, we appreciate thumbs up for what we're doing. If you can see fit to do that. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, we do travel and cruise industry news on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then I post the videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry plus keep you updated on ongoing news as it happens. So uh, hit that little subscribe button down there in the lower right-hand corner, I think it is. The bell notification lets you know when I go live. It's been a crazy morning this morning. My lead story got pushed back to the second story now as we had some breaking news literally uh, out of Europe uh, just uh within the last uh, half hour, 45 minutes ago, actually Pete uh, sent me the link on it, um, which is about the same time we were interviewing our guests for Sunday and getting the tests run for Sunday on Sunday shows, which I'll tell you about in a little bit. But anyway, this came out of Lyon, France this morning. Uh, researchers at the LaCroix Rouge Hospital in Lyon, France have developed a breath test for COVID-19. The non-invasive screening utilizes a machine which tests droplets as patients exhale into a tomb, much like a standard breathalyzer test. In just a few seconds, results are delivered on the particular chemical compounds found in one's breath, thus whether a person is a carrier of coronavirus or not. The rapidity of the test as well as the method of implementation are its biggest pluses, unlike the polymerase chain reaction PCR test, most commonly used by clinicians in screening for the disease. The PCR is also known as a swab test and carried out by inserting a very long swab deep into the navel ca cavity. After originating in China last December, COVID-19, the disease caused by the coronavirus has spread to 188 countries and regions across the world. The reason that I made this a lead story, folks, this could be a game changer as far as the travel and airline industry and cruise industry are concerned, as well as a, a lot of applications um, are literally around the world. To be able to do a non-invasive quick result test uh, would be fabulous. You know, you, you go to get on an airplane to fly. Uh, say I, I go to, uh, over to Tom Henry's place in Richmond and get on an airplane to go down to Port Canaveral, to fly into Orlando. They give me a test. It says that I'm clean. I can go get on the airport and go to get on the airplane knowing that everybody else on that plane is free of COVID. I, I, I'd be more likely to fly. Then we get down there to Orlando and take the bus over to a cruise ship in Port Canaveral. They give me another one of those tests. I'll breathe into a damn tube a hundred times a day. And everybody that gets on the boat is free of those tests. And they've done all the sanitization stuff on the ship. Man, oh man, it would just make our, our life so much better. So hats off to the folks over there in France. I really, I'm excited about this. I'm a lot more excited about this than, you know, they had an announcement this morning about a vaccine coming out of Russia. I, I have no faith in that one whatsoever. <laughs> Who the hell knows how much testing they've done over there and it would ever get a straight story about it. I, I, of course, I'm at the point where if a politician says it, and I don't care if it's a Republican, a Democrat, 
one of our politicians in this country or a politician from Russia or any other country, I don't believe it. If a politician says it, forget it. It's a lie, most likely. So that's my take. Anyway, I'm excited about this one. This is this to me is the most exciting news I have seen in a very, very long time. So now on to the lead story. What was supposed to be the lead story this morning uh, has to do with the Caribbean uh, and the United States. Okay, we all know that the United States has the highest number of people suffering or killed by COVID-19, but it has warned residents of the United States that traveling to numerous Caribbean community countries because of the situation regarding the virus is uh, not recommended. There, they, they've taken the, this four-step process with conditions improving in some countries while potentially deteriorating in others. The State Department has returned to the previous system of country-specific levels of travel advice, with levels uh, going from one to four, depending on the country-specific conditions. Now, that's a lot of you political speak for uh, you want to go there or not go there. And if it's a level three, you shouldn't go there. If it's a level four, hell no, don't go there. So uh, currently in the Caribbean, level three advisories have been issued for the following. Antigua, Anguilla, Barbuda, Aruba, Barbados, Bermuda, Bonaire, Dominica, Granada, Guadalupe, St. Vincent's and the Grenadines, Curacao, Jamaica, Martinique, Montserrat, St. Kitts, Nevis, St. Martin, St. Lucia, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Turks and Caicos, Trinidad, and Tobago. Level three advisories that uh, say you shouldn't, but you if, if, if you're insistent upon it, you can get there. All right, level four, which is a flat no-no. You just don't want to do this right now. The Dominican Republic, which has the highest COVID-19 infection rate among the Caribbean countries, along with Belize, Cuba, Haiti, Guyana, and Honduras. Those are level fours, which means uh -uh. don't want to do that, folks, no matter what. Don't want to do it. Now, it's interesting that all of those places, that most all of them, have banned U.S. from traveling there. So how much of this is the U.S. Uh, getting back? Not that I would ever say that the government would want to, uh, you know, point their finger at somebody else off their own blame. But most of these countries have got us banned. We can't go there anyway. So what difference does it make? But anyway, so and they do have some some problems now that are, you know, everybody that's tried to get open and hasn't done it properly is having problems, just like we are in this country that at least 30, 40 percent of you people out there won't accept that we screwed up. So we did. All right. Belize. They have delayed their reopening. It was They were planning on opening uh, August the 15th the, for travel and tourism. So they're postponing what was the planned opening, the uh, officials have confirmed, citing an increase in COVID cases. The Belize Tourist Board said it was necessary to delay the reopening of Philip Golden, Goldson International Airport, and the country has not yet announced a new date. So, Belize is, uh, it's not recommended. We travel there, and they have shut it down. So, all right, moving on to weather. Uh, this is the eastern uh, Atlantic, rather, uh, out of the uh, National Hurricane Center. And the little red X you see there, uh, this is the first 
visible satellite imagery showing that a better defined center of circulation is formed in association with a low pressure system located about 900 miles west southwest of Cabo Verde Islands. In addition, in addition, the associated shower and thunderstorm activity has become more organized since yesterday. Environmental conditions are expected to become more conducive for additional development and advisories could be initiated on a tropical depression as early as later today. So basically they're saying, and there's a 90% chance of further development. And of course that's going to head straight across and hit the islands, just like the, you know, the normal route from these storms until we get a better chance on where that's going. But they're saying uh, it's got a 90% chance through the next 48 hours and a 90% chance through uh, five days. So you could have several more development stages on uh, whatever numbers they have. Uh, it doesn't have a name yet, but I think you'll probably have a name uh, maybe later on today. Now, that's uh, the uh, in the Pacific side. We got two issues out there. First, uh, a disturbance. Uh, it's a few hundred miles south of the Gulf of Tuhanapec. It's an area of low pressure forecast to develop from this system well south and southwest of the southwestern coast of Mexico over the next couple of days. They're saying over the next 48 hours, development on this sucker is 10% but over the next five days is 70%. So there's a chance on down the road by the weekend or, or into early next week that this could develop into something more. In the meantime, the system that we were watching is a hurricane. This is Hurricane Alida. Uh, as of uh, nine o'clock, uh, this morning, their time, it has maximum sustained winds of 85 knots. That's 100 miles an hour. The pressure is 975 millibars. Uh, movement is northwest at 12 knots or 14 miles an hour. Basically, this is a non starter. It's out in the water, it's not going to interact with land. The conditions aren't right for it to make it to Hawaii. So this is going to uh, spin around. <coughs> mm. Excuse me for uh, coughing there, folks. <clears throat> it's going to spin around for a couple of days and die. But it is a hurricane. So uh, Pacific Hurricane Elida. At least I can pronounce that one. All right. So enough with... Uh, did I, I didn't change that to this. Did I change that? I didn't change that to this one. That's the map I was supposed to have up there to talk about Alita and that other storm. Sorry, I didn't change the, change the picture there. The yellow X is the one that's uh, got a possibility of developing. And of course, Alita is just going to go out there in the uh, center of the Pacific and die. Okay. Sorry about having the wrong uh, wrong uh, picture up while I was talking about. Okay, if that's the only thing I screw up today, that'll be amazing. All right, Holland America. I, this was kind of interesting, and this is something that I did not see when they did it before. Uh, following the success of its virtual voyage to Alaska in June, Holland America is setting sail on the social media once again, this time taking fans on a week-long virtual cruise to Norway. Departing uh, guests can cruise aboard the new Staten Dam as the ship follows Holland America's line, popular Norris Legends itinerary. The premium cruise line will bring the experience to life on the brand's Facebook page, as well as brand ambassador Seth, Seth Wayne's uh, Facebook page, with live events, scenic videos, vivid imagery, and interactive activities. I, 
folks, I've not seen this. I did not see the Alaska thing they did. But I think that's a pretty cool idea. So I'm, I'm going to have to look into this one and see if this is exactly what they're doing about a virtual cruise. I don't know. But it, it interests me. So. Now, the other thing that was a story this morning before the news broke in France was, uh, to, you know, Bailey, the, the um, CEO of Royal Caribbean, uh, in a, what was that? It was in a press conference, I think, um, early this morning, our time. Uh, Michael Bailey held a Q&A session with members of the media and uh, during the cruise line's quarterly earnings call. During the call, Bailey said that COVID tested was very relevant and is very likely that testing will occur. He went on to say the discussions are underway and all of the health protocols are currently under review with their health panel. He also said that testing is a part of the thinking, but we have not yet reached a point of to our protocols where we are ready to publish and release uh, for discussion. Now, see where that fits with that news this morning about uh, a breath test? Boy, would that be so awesome if that, in fact, is becomes a reality. Uh, I'm like, Again, I'm excited about that one, for guys. So, uh, that's from Royal Caribbean. All right, let's go over and see. I'll tell you what, I guess I better do the commercial before I do that, shouldn't I? Where's the commercial? There it is. I'll be back in a minute. Do you have a bad back, bad hips, bad knees, or any other mobility issues? Think about Scoot Around. For scooters, walkers, wheelchairs, even oxygen needs, delivered right to your cabin. Scoot Around for all your mobility needs on your upcoming cruise. Okay, before we get to that, you guys all know that I co-host uh, the Cruise Amigos with Pete over there in England. He talks funny. And John up there in Minnesota, he doesn't talk funny. Uh, our guest this Sunday, coming up, this next Sunday, is going to be Lady Moray, um, who is a vlogger um, and a Alaska adventurist. She actually started off cruising and doing vlogs about her cruises. But then uh, COVID wiped out her schedule for the year. And uh, so she started doing some uh, adventure stuff in Alaska since she lives in Alaska. She lives in Anchorage. Uh, and our friend Emily, actually, Emily's the one that recommended. Uh, she came across Lady someplace. And it's, it's Travels with Lady is, is her uh website name and uh, Facebook uh, handle. Uh, Emily came across her and recommended that I get a hold of her, and I did, and she's set up to be our guest on the show Sunday. So that's going to be, uh, she's going to be delightful. We have Pete and I talked with her this morning and did our test from up in Alaska. She was up, I don't know, how was it, like six o'clock her time, uh, and, and did the test and everything. So that'll be uh, coming up this this coming Sunday. And then it looks like next Sunday, a, you know, a week from this coming Sunday, that will be the 23rd, looks like we're going to have uh, a little bit of different uh, 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 content. We're going to be talking with uh, the uh, managing director of Katrina Cruise Line. Uh, you're not familiar with uh, Katrina Cruise Line? No, well, I wasn't either. It's a small ship cruise line in Croatia, which could be very interesting. They have some interesting ports. They have some interesting ships, and they're currently uh, sailing. So that's on the, it looks like it'll be on the 23rd. So those two weeks are, are set up. Now, Last Sunday, the uh, day before yesterday, we had our friend Shane Riley from 
um, from uh, Virgin Voyages. He's executive vice president of international sales for Virgin Voyages. And if you haven't seen this show, go watch it. Uh, my opinion of Virgin Voyages is totally different now after talking with Shane. I'm really looking forward to getting a, a chance to get on one of their ships. But in the course of the show, of course, I had a chance to ask Shane, other than his Virgin Voyages uh, boats, which the first one is out, the second one's under construction. Uh, what was one of his favorite ships? Well, this one's easy. This is an easy question for me, actually, because... Um, I was at Princess Cruises at the time, and we launched, I was very lucky enough to be as part of the launch team for uh, Royal Princess. Uh, and we had a uh, Royal Highness, uh, Princess Kate. Um, she came to name the ship, and she was heavily pregnant, so it was very touch and go whether she would be, whether she would have Prince George or not before uh, she got to the ship. Uh, but luckily she made it, and we got a chance to say hello to her. She got some time on the ship, uh, and the ship was amazing. And it was my first, it was my first opportunity to kind of launch a ship from the beginning, really. So I was joined the ship. I joined the business early on, uh, and I really got a chance to put the ship on sail. I got to see people literally fall in love with her in front of my eyes, and that's the frustrating thing about COVID, right? Because I know people are doing exactly the same thing about Scarlet. When they see her, they'll fall in love with her, uh, and I just really want people to go and uh, get a chance to, to experience her for themselves. We've been waiting a long time now, so um, just as soon as we can, and as soon as we're able to do so, we'll get sailors on board, voyaging safe and well. And since I had a, you know, I had him stuck where he had to answer questions, of course, I had to ask with all his worldwide travels, what's his favorite port? Well, my favorite port, this is a tough one. Uh, favorite port. Um, probably my favorite port would have to be Santorini or Mykonos. Uh, both in Greece, obviously. I love both of them. Um, I really like Mykonos because uh, you either get a tender across or you, you dock, depending on whether you're kind of the first ship there or whether you've got the slot or not. Um, and just be able to wander around the cobbled streets. And it is like going on Mamma Mia, the, the musical movie. And just it's just like being in the film set of that. And it's just amazing. And going to have a nice ice cold beer in the harbour and uh, there's a pelican that wanders around, uh, a local pelican. Um, there may be more than one, but I've only ever seen one. Uh, and I'm sure it's the same one I've seen every time. Uh, but he just wanders around. He, he, he always hangs around where the fishermen are bringing in their catch of the day in the morning. So uh, you talked about early mornings. I love getting off early as soon as I can um, and then actually watch the kind of destination come alive um, and then maybe have a spot of lunch and then head back to the ship in the early afternoon. And folks, if, if remember Pete, John, me, maybe Gretchen and, and Mr. Gretchen and several other people uh, from, from this uh, broadcast. We're going to go meet that Pelican. We'll be there in October of 22. And uh, we're going to, uh, I'm going to make Pete feed the Pelican. All right. Let's go look at some comments to see who's here today. Haven't even looked. All right, Tom Henry's with us. Good to have you, Tom. And there's Pete. Pete's here from London. Uh, Tom Henry says that he's getting a number of friend requests from questionable women that are friends with Chili. What's going on over at the farm? Boy, these women are... If, uh, Tom, what can I tell you? It's just like that. That's the way it is. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Pete is too. Uh, that's great. I'm glad all these women at the farm are uh, uh, following you guys. It's good. Uh, uh, questionable women, absolutely, no doubt about. It. Just don't be uh, don't be talk, uh, talking about uh, Rona, Rhonda. <laughs> I can't even get my tongue around that one. Anyway, forget it. Okay. There's Amy's with us. Amy got here. Hi, guys. Amy was here bright and early today. It's definitely hot on Chili's farm. Yeah, it was. It's 90 again. It'll be 90s again today. I'll be out there to the pool. Uh, give me about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes from now, I will be in the water. I started to do part of the show out there again today. Uh, it's been a lovely morning to do it. 
but it's just been a zoo around here this morning. I, I didn't have a chance to get outside. So uh, we'll do that another day. There's Gretchen. See, Gretchen's with us. Gretchen, who we hope is going to go with us to chase the pelican around in, in uh, Mykonos. Uh, Sonny's with us. Sonny says good morning to everybody. Arlene Adams is here. Good morning, Arlene. Glad to have you. Uh, Sonny says nice Caribbean pish- picture. Wish I was there. Yeah, boy, isn't that, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, so some of our, a couple of our friends over there in Scotland are going to Edinburgh this weekend. We might have to do another chat on that. And I've got a, hopefully a chat coming up later on today with one of our friends that's a writer. I won't mention any names who's on a river cruise right now. And she's taking care of some, her responsibilities. And as soon as that's done, hopefully we're going to do a chat from somewhere in France here today, later on or tomorrow. Uh, anyway, just stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot, a lot of stuff happening around here today. Emily's with us. Good morning, gang. How is everybody? Uh, let's see who else is here. <laughs> Hi, Emily. You miss Chili impersonating Chris, whom forget his last name. Crazy dude actor who shakes his hair crazy as and Tommy boy. I wasn't impersonating. I well, maybe I was. <laughs> I just kind of went off early this morning. Uh, that's what can I say? Uh, I'm really, I'm getting so sick of politicians, folks. And I'm not, I'm not fussing. I don't care if you're conservative, you're liberal, you're Republican, you're Democrat. It don't matter to me. I don't like any of you. If you're a politician, the hell with that. You know, I, I don't believe anything that comes out of any mouth of any politician. None. Zero. Nada. Uh, Farley Gretchen says, yeah, I know. That's who he's talking about. Chris Farley. Yes, I know. Uh, anyone else see Chris when Chili was doing his rant? Uh, okay. I, I quit. Yeah. Rest in peace. Chris Farley says, Jason, Jason's with us from Pittsburgh. Hey, Jason. Uh, love Chris Farley, John Belushi, rest in peace. And both. Yes, honey. I agree. They were funny guys. Um, Chris and David, what a pair <laughs> after a few cocktails, who cares? Not huh, Jason. Exactly. Yes. Well, uh, what can I say? And Emily says, chili falls, the cocktail party is this Saturday. Yes. The cocktail party that we were doing on Wednesdays is now moved to Saturday. Uh, we had some, quite a few new people on the cocktail party this week. Uh, so, and Emily missed it, by the way, in case you, you and I was going to load a picture and I forgot to do it today. Uh, Emily was out kayaking up there someplace in New York at, with a mask on. Uh, I was going to ask, I, I would, you know, what happens if you uh, flip over the kayak and you get dunked in the, in the drink, uh, what, what that does with the mask? Uh, I'm just curious, but. Anyway, so Emily's been kayaking, and Rona uh, was uh, trying to con Emily into getting she and I out on a kayak, and you got a better chance of hitting the lottery four times today. Uh, but anyway, so Emily was out um, uh, doing that. And yes, Jason, Mama's Paradise isn't paying her crew, and there's a lawsuit now because of that. Yeah, you'll notice uh, I kind of, backed off of uh, Bahamas Paradise till we know a little more about what's going on with that one, uh, where I had the link on all my videos and stuff for Bahamas Paradise. I've taken that down now until I know a little more about, again, you hear so many things. I don't know what's right and what's not right. But anyway, there's a lawsuit that's been filed against them on, over that one now. Uh, Emily says, thank you, chili lady. Seems like a very nice young lady. Looking forward to that. Yeah, she I was she was delightful. And she's got, I'll tell you what, she's got a smile from Alaska to Virginia. That is just a fabulous smile that young lady has. So I'm kind of, this is going to be an again a little different uh, uh 
uh, interview, but it's this, I think it's going to be a fun interview too. All right. Cindy says, good morning. What did she say? Uh, just back from picking up your new glasses. Oh, Cindy can see now. That's great. Glad to hear that, Cindy. Ah, uh, yeah. Gretchen's working on it. I know what that means. She's trying to get uh, uh, Mr. Gretchen to say, okay, we're going to go to Europe with the crew. I, I know. She's working on it. We're going to get him over there. We're, we'll, we'll have a, another another uh, a, a clown to uh, <laughs> pal around with Gretchen. We'll take care of him. Yes, indeed. Uh, Cruises for Solo 2021. What did I say? Did I say 2022? Yeah, it's in October of 2021. If I said that wrong, that was a uh, brain lock. You know, October of 2021 is when we're going. I'm going to be. I'm going to be in Europe almost the whole month now. It looks like. Um, Emily, sorry she missed my rant. Ah, yeah. Well, what can I say? Uh, two trips one day. Good luck, Cindy. Two trips one day. Good luck. Okay. Um, Gretchen says, I'll have to be there on Saturday unless I get hijacked by one of my kids. Yeah, you were in the pool with one of the grandkids, I think, this last, uh, the last cocktail party, which that's okay. We understand. But it was, we, we met some, and that met some new people that I hadn't met before. So it was, that was a fun uh, Saturday. I'm glad we moved it to Saturday, you know. I don't like tying the Saturday up necessarily, uh, but what the hell? Okay, Emily, I had a neck gaiter on. I had pulled over my face because people were nearby. The neck gaiter fits right around my neck. Oh, okay. All right, so it was actually because you were keeping social distancing even though you were in a, in a, in a kayak. I thought it had, to, it had something to do with the fish. I didn't really, but it sounded good. Um, Gretchen says, you sure are athletic. Keep it up. Yeah, she's not talking about me. She's talking about Emily. The kayaking and stand-up paddleboard adventures are a new Rochelle and are done by L.L. Bing. I might, I don't I've never been on a paddleboard Although I might attempt that one, but I can't see my fat butt in a kayak. I, it ain't going to happen. And I hate to say this. And there's two kayaks. Let's see. Where's the window? The window's over there. There's two kayaks right outside that window. Nice ones. They're, they're my brother-in-law's. Um, they haven't been, they've been here 10, 12 years and never been touched. Uh, I mean, he's, what is Gene's 13, 14 years older than I am. I can't see them actually using them, but I don't know. But anyway, there's two kayaks right outside my window. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap me up for today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. If you're new, uh, appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We do appreciate that. We're up to uh, 2028 now, so we're moving on toward 2100. Uh, now, it's, it, it, the, I don't know, YouTube's been funny on, you know, they purging and backing up and down and back and forth, but finally it seems like we're steadily back to growing again, which is a good thing. So um, that's it for the day, guys. I will see you on Thursday, uh, and if not before then, if something major happens, I'll, of course, get on the air waves as quickly as possible. If not, I'll see you guys Thursday morning. You guys stay safe, stay healthy, wear your mask, stay at home if you can, socially distance at all times when you're out. And I'll see you later. Y'all have a great day. Thank you for watching today's Travel and Cruise Industry News. Join us every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern for another episode. Traveling Cruise Industry News is a production of Chili's Cruises.